Siemi, Siemi Ben and Zambi, all praises. Not that and Zambi and Pungu to Linda are called. Hallelujah. I say to everyone, Salbona. Hallelujah. We have a, 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 an open discussion. And what we want to talk about, <clears throat> excuse me, on this morning is why they denied us of our history. And we were listening earlier to Nkosi Edward. And um, he was speaking. Brother Edward, you still with us? Yes, I am. All right. I know uh, what you were saying. I said it was packed. And I'm going to ask you if you wouldn't mind to, uh, if you can remember what you said, <laughs> to uh, <laughs> present your, uh, your statement and question again. And uh, let us get into this because it was something specific okay. you said that I would like to first address. But go ahead. Okay. Um, I had often thought that the people that we are, our ancestors, that uh, that's, that uh, were taken away from their their lands, their their home. And I, I think that about when this happened, how they had got to where they are or, or were and how powerful a people that they were. And and, every, and, and when Tata Zombie led them through so many battles with victories, Mm -hmm. And they just had victories over uh, races of people that they didn't think that they could uh, have a victory over. Mm -hmm. But Tata Zombie was with them. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. He provided so many ways for these other nations to fall into their hands and give them their victories to occupy the land that he had promised them. Mm -hmm. Okay, and, 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 and it was battle after battle, you know, and each time they had a victory. And, and when I say, I say, wow, how, how did these Europeans just come over and do this? Mm -hmm. How did they do that? When, uh, to a nation that was so powerful, so fearful that I mean, when the, just the name of Israeli, you know, the the name of 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 our nation just put fear in other nations mm -hmm. because we had Tata Zombie with us. Okay, yeah. Yeah. so then we come when I think about the part about we not they were not doing what his commandments, what his laws required them to do. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't follow him. Mm -hmm. Sure, to a certain point, yes, they did. Mm -hmm. And then they went their own ways. Yes. They, they, they figured that they could do without him. Mm -hmm. But again and again, he allowed them to uh, win battles after battles and but and but instead of that, they kept leaving him. Yeah. They kept going back. They kept doing the thing on doing other, worshiping other gods and and you know stuff like that. And and, and he got tired of it to the point where he said he just left them alone mm -hmm. for so many years. He was silent. So I'm not going to tell him nothing. I'm not going to tell them what's going to happen next year. I'm not going to tell them who's coming over here. You know, I'm not going to tell them to build their forces up and, and prepare themselves for this battle that's about to come. Who's coming over here to take you? I ain't going to tell you nothing because you won't listen to me. So he allowed it to happen. And it was our fault that it happened. Okay? Mm -hmm. So 
for 400 years. That was a curse that we put on ourselves. And we're still wondering how it happened. It happened because you made it happen, you know? <laughs> so <laughs> that's that's what it is. But I, I think about that uh, so, so much that being hard-headed, stiff-necked, and not wanting to believe him, not wanting to follow him, it was just ridiculous. You know, even not just from the beginning, but even their children, children's children mm -hmm. were still stiff naked, stiff mm -hmm. you know, stiff headed or hard headed and would not listen. So yeah, here we are. <clears throat> but I believe if we if we get the chance to go back, if he mm -hmm. take us back, yeah, he's gonna prepare everything for us. Everything will be set. All we have to do is believe. Yes. Believe. That's what I believe. Yes. Yes. And know who we are. You know, and know, we, uh, and know who we are. Yes. Yes. Know who yes. we are. Uh, now, um, what I had said, you know, uh, again, it was impact. Uh, everything that you said. But I would want to clarify something. It was not. Um, just the Europeans. There's an old saying, and, and you know this, all skin folk ain't kin folk. Uh -huh. Now, even some of our, um, well, let me put it this way. Those who look like us helped um, put us out there. To, to get us off the lane. Yes. Okay. So when um, the European came, they had help. And they had help from people who looked like us. Now, um, there's a scripture that uh, speaks about uh, Balaam. And the king was saying that uh, we had to be cursed. You know, they have to curse us. And Balaam said, we can't curse them. He said, we have to get them to curse themselves. So now, why would he say that? He said that, as you say it, because we're some powerful people. We're some very powerful people. Let us remember we're created in the image and likeness of Tata and Zambi, the creator of all things. <clears throat> Excuse me. He is the king of kings, Tata and Zambi. The church correlate that scripture to Yesiah and say, Yesiah is the king of kings. But Tatan Zambi is the king of kings. Remember, he said that we are a royal priesthood, a holy nation. So we were given to dominion over the earth for the other nations to follow. So with that said, what we see Josiah had done in scripture, he called the raging storm, said, peace be still. He raised the dead, healed the sick, delivered from demonic possessions. Then he turns around and saying, these things I do, you can do and greater. This is who we are. And we have to acknowledge that. So we were some very powerful people and uh, allow me to rephrase, we are some very powerful people. We just allow the Europeans religion to turn us away from who we are. They denied us of our true history. So it wasn't just that the European had come and taken us 
they had to know who they were getting. So they had help in that. And it was those who looked like us. You had also made a statement too um, about how the Most High showed his hand, who he was, how he used us and brought us out. Every time we went into captivity, he brought us out. And one of the main things that I look at is when he sent Masa, Moses, into Kamata, Egypt, to bring a Sulele out of Egypt. Everything that they went through, when they got to the mountain, they still acted up. Yes. And Masa asked him, he said, those of you who are standing on the side of Tata and Zambi, stand with me. And those who are on the side of Baal, stand over there. And we saw what happened. That the yeah. earth opened up and swallowed them. Swallowed them. They saw, yeah, yes. they saw the hand of Tata and Zambi. Mm -hmm. How could they be so foolish to continue to want to worship an idol God and say it truth. was that God that brought them out of Kamata. Yes. Pure ignorance, foolishness. Yep. But see, this is what religion does to us. When something has been impressed upon you so for the many years that we have been indoctrinated in religion, that when we present truth to them, it's foreign. They don't understand it because it doesn't line up with what they've been taught. It doesn't line up with, well, Jesus being the son of God he is God. Huh? I'll pause there. Queen Royal Daughter, yes, ma'am. Yeah, what I wanted to say is that um, we cannot for one minute forget the spiritual aspect of what happened to us mm. because we were a spiritual people. Yes. So in order to defeat us, they had to defeat us first by spiritual means. Yes. Yeah. So why do you think that they had the church to write the edict of slavery? What does the church have to do with any of that? <laughs> what well, you know, so we have to never forget what happened to our ancestors was mainly spiritual because when once they caught us spiritually, they could lead us like a cattle with a hook in our nose. They could do anything that they wanted to with us. Yes. We were traumatized. And that's why I spoke about the intentionality of what they did to us in slavery. Why they always chose to enslave us. They could have killed us, mm -hmm. but they chose to enslave us because they understood the trauma that slavery created and the psychological damage it does. Mm -hmm. So, you know, our ancestors wrote all these things, sent us all these words, you know, all these books that we have so that we don't repeat what they, what they did. Yeah. That we have a fighting chance because all, everything hinges on us in this generation. That's why we're the chosen generation. Mm -hmm. Everything hinges on us. So they give us all the information that they needed, <laughs> that we needed, so that we don't repeat that stuff. Mm -hmm. So that we don't fall into the same spiritual traps. Yes. Because that's what we have been in, a spiritual trap where they kept us and they kept us with their enchantments. And, you know, what do we think Christmas songs are? They sing it every year, every year, every year. They're, they're enchantments yeah. that we mm -hmm. keep ourselves spiritually bound. Yeah. The enemy also knew that 
um, Tatan Zombie said it was a remnant that was going to come back. Wow. So that means the rest of them are just um, hangers on. And the enemy knew that he could use them against us, yeah. our own brother against us. Yes. So that's why he throws these spirits in between us because it's easier for us to defeat each other, especially in the time where we, we're becoming aware and we we know that we can't trust what they say, but we could look at another brother and we're trying to move in that spirit of uh, Ubuntu and Kintuari, yes. togetherness and unity, that we look at our brother as our brother. And we were we were more <laughs> in, we're more inclined to trust our brother. Mm -hmm. So the enemy used the he is using these people against us who look like us. Yes. So you know that's why we have to pray for that spirit of um discernment. Mm -hmm. Because it's like we're walking in a minefield and we're few in number, it says a remnant. We're few in number. Yes. So when we find each other, we have to hold on to each other, mm -hmm. but we have to wow. search each other also. Search yeah. our intention. And that's where the discernment comes in. Yes. Yes. You, you're so right. You're so right. You know, uh, and that was one of the things that I have, uh, you know, talked about is having the spirit of discernment. You know, uh, when you allow uh, the spirit of discernment to have its way with you, you'll be able to pick up and know whose heart is true and who's trying to sneak in and cause some damage and chaos. And the Most High will show you how to deal and handle with that, that individual. You know, be it individual or individuals. So we, we have to have that spirit of discernment. And especially when we're talking about going back to community. We can't just let anybody in. Let, let me just be real. We can't. We might be letting a... a uh, a, a rapist in, you know, uh, we have to seek the most high and ask him to guide us. He will do that. He was the one that said he will bring us back into the land. So everything is going to be restored to us. So when he does it, everyone will be with one accord. Right mind, right heart, right spirit. And we will be doing that, that pleases Tata and Zombie. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Get that. So now we know who we are. You know, I think it was uh, Mama Brenda, and I'm glad to see her <laughs> with us this morning. Um, but I, I was speaking with her just this morning, and uh, she was speaking about stages of awakening. And the first stage is us knowing who we are. And we know that we are the people of the book. We know that we are the chosen, the called out ones of Tata and Zombie. We know this. So now the next phase or the next step is returning to our spirituality. And we have mentioned this a uh, few times in the past that people have said, I can't wait to receive my power. I can't wait to get my powers. You know, and it has been revealed from Tata and Zambi that the power has always been there. Been there. Mm -hmm. It was dormant. 
Now, again, I'll tell you why the power has always been there. When you look in the mirror, when you're looking at us on here, you are looking at Tata and Zombie. So if we're created in his image and after his likeness, we possess what he possesses. We are his children. I am my father's son. You are your father's daughter. Receive it. Walk in it. I love what Queen Royal Daughter said. <laughs> if you allow me to say this. She said, I am Royal Daughter, child of Congo. Was that correct, Queen? A daughter of Congo? I said, I am royal daughter, the one who bears the mark of Congo. Thank you. One who bears the mark of Congo. You see that? She identified who she is. This is what I'm talking about. We have an identity. Society taught us that we don't. Society tried to say we came from monkeys and apes. They even said that we're from Africa. Our ancestors are from Africa. But they yet claim we have no identity. Out of all the people on this planet, why is it us who they say have no identity? is because they don't want us to know who we are. Tata and Zambi chose one nation of people. And the nation is us. We are the ones, as Queen Royal Daughter said, we are the ones who bear the mark of Congo. Congo. You had your hand up. Queen, royal daughter, please. Yeah, I lost my thought. I'll come back. I'm to sorry. <laughs> what is this about? That's fine. It's okay. So we bear the mark of Congo and we are his. We have. We possess everything that he does. Oh, yeah. So we have to know who we are and walk in it. You remember now? <laughs> yes. You know, when we read the scriptures, it talks about the day of Pentecost, when the Mwanda came down and engulfed the the disciples and from that day they walked in power and authority but tatan zambi said i will leave with you the comforter mm -hmm. so that means the comforter is still here yes we have the same potential as the as those disciples because the comforter is still here he never took it back so we are pregnant with potential uh but he said he will send his spirit. Uh, um, Isaiah said that many others will come and you will do greater works than me. Yes. So that possibility is still here. We just have to get rid of that fear and all the things because the, 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 the Mwandan Semi, he, he, he's all power. Mm -hmm. He doesn't understand fear. He can't live in that environment. So we have to get rid of these things because we're holding back ourselves. We're hindering ourselves mm -hmm. from getting to that place where he's gonna use us. Cause 
you know, the enemy knows that that is why he traumatized us. That's why, you know, he, he brought us to the, the, this uh, place of total degradation mm -hmm. because he understands that Tatan Zambi said with them, I will destroy you. Yes. So he understands that when we come into our power, that he is destroyed. Yes. So that is a fight to come into our power, but we have to get rid of the things that hold the Mwanda back. Yes, Ashe. Um, you know, the title says, why did they deny uh, us of our history, right? <clears throat> First and foremost, they can't deny nothing that does not belong to them. What they did to us was they used extreme measures of torture to cause us to not participate in our culture, in our spirituality. And throughout the years, we've forgotten it because they did not allow it. Not that they denied us of it. They did not allow us to practice and participate in our culture. We know that over in America, they would cut the tongue out if they practiced their spirituality or spoke their language. They did uh, horrible things to our ancestors. And reason being is when they came over into quote unquote Sub-Saharan Africa, particularly the kingdom of Congo where the Bantu people um, habitated, these people saw how one we were living. You can, you can Google the documentation showing how we lived a lavish life. There were castles over there. They talked about our dress, our appearances. But not only that, they also talked about the power of our spirituality. Mm -hmm. And they wanted this spirituality. They also, when you research, you'll see that they always knew about this place that was filled with gold. When you research, you will discover that in Europe, they didn't have anything. They had ran out of food. They didn't have anything. They didn't have any resources. So they were going to search for food and resources and they stumbled upon Africa that is filled with so much wealth, so much knowledge so much powerful spirituality. These people were intrigued with what they saw and they wanted it. Uh, I'm trying to make this short because it can get very deep. So they saw the power of our spirituality and like the other things that they were so intrigued about and, and desired, they wanted that power. Mm -hmm. So they had the first relinquish us of our power. So they went through extreme measures to do that. Now, when they came with the watered down religion, which they stole from us, you, we have to realize these people had been in Africa way before. Their ancestors were here in Africa way before. So they had our scrolls. Remember Napoleon went in and, and uh, took all the... Um, documents from the library of Alexandra and quote unquote supposedly burned it. Do you really think they burned all that knowledge that they wanted? Come on, let's be realistic. Why do you think the Vatican has a 52 mile vault? What's in all those though what is in that long vault? 52 mm -hmm. miles. Yep. That is our artifacts. Yep. That is our scrolls. That is the library the information they got from the mm -hmm. library of, of Alexandra. Alexandria. So they wanted our spirituality because they saw how powerful it was. And, mm -hmm. and many of you all know that we had schools and we learned about our spirituality because our spirituality is science based. It's science based. Why do you think there are so many inventions over there in Africa? They just invent things out of the air. And then they come and steal and take the yes. credit for it, the Europeans. Yes. It's because our spirituality is science-based. And, and these things were taught to us at a young age. We had schools. A lot of you all know, like I was stating. They saw we had schools. They wanted to participate in these schools because you learn these things about science, alchemy, et cetera. Mm -hmm. 
to manipulate elements. Yeah. And they wanted this, and you could not participate in our schools if you were not Bantu. So they went to extreme measures and started killing our priests, our teachers, our ingangas. They started killing them if they did not tell them the secret, and they had to go underground. So that is where you, they came up with the term secret schools because they could not participate in our schools because one, our spirituality is very powerful. Into the wrong hands, we already know it can do so much damage. Yes. A lot of people now are using it for evil. Now that's the witchcraft right there when you use it for evil because mm -hmm. it's not to be utilized for that. And so I understand that they were able to get some of it because they were killing our, our priests and things. And they actually used some of this power over us. And also, um, Zombie was talking about Balaam and how he said, we can't curse these people. How can you curse somebody that has been, I hate using this term, been increased by know. the most high? <laughs> you can't. You can't. So he said, we have to get them to curse themselves. So they manipulated our scrolls and things and have us doing things, saying things that the opposite, that is the opposite of what we're supposed to be doing. And so that in mm -hmm. itself causes us to put us in a, a cursed state. And I'm gonna give you one prime example. And I've mentioned mm -hmm. this before to some of you all in our group chat. They told us that our ancestors were demonic. They say, oh, they worship their ancestors and that's demonic. When we know they, they, they esteem their ancestors all the time, but yet when we try to uh, revere our ancestors, it's the, not demonic. But let me show you how they twist the scripture and have us do opposite of what the creator told us to do. And by doing so, it causes us to be disobedient, putting us in a position of being cursed. The Bible says, honor thy mother and thy father that thy days may be long in the land that I'm giving mm -hmm. you. So when you go to the Blue Letter Bible, and maybe you can pull that up, you you look at the word, they have a word in the Blue Letter Bible. We know it's not their language and they try to interpret it, but they have Ab for father. And when you go look at the definition in the Blue Letter, Blue Letter Bible for Ab, up under there, you will see forefathers and ancestors. So essentially that verse is saying, honor your forefathers or slash ancestors that your days may be long upon the earth. And it also says progenitor of a nation is also defined mm -hmm. as that as well. But they said, and, and I'm talking about honoring, not worshiping, not worshiping as their state. Exactly. So because they had us believing that that's demonic, we disconnected ourselves from our ancestors and we dishonored mm -hmm. them versus honoring mm -hmm. them and they placed in there honor your mother and your father and they took out really what was supposed to be in there this is not the only yeah. only uh, this is just one example that i'm giving you that they have manipulated scripture and changed it mm -hmm. up and you have to be led by the that's why the spirit is important I'm not saying throw the Bible away, no. But what I'm saying is you need the spirit to help you discern what is true and what is not because mm -hmm. they have made and changed good for evil and evil for good is what they have mm -hmm. done. Yes. And it is it's very <laughs> important that we have the spirit so that we can discern and read and the spirit can speak to us mm -hmm. and reveal because in the book of Daniel, it says it is he that reveals the hidden things. Remember when the king had this terrible dream and he wanted an interpretation and he would not even tell the quote unquote what the Bible says magicians what his dream was and they was trying to get him to tell him uh, uh, them what the dream was so that they can tell him, tell him what it meant. He said, no, I'm not going to tell you. You're the magicians. You tell me. <laughs> And so he said, I'm going to kill all of them. He got mad. I'm going to kill all of you, which included Daniel mm -hmm. and his friends because they were quote unquote magicians. That's what, that's not the true word, but that's the word they have in the Bible. And Daniel said, what is this going on? Real short. He says, let, let us go fast and pray. 
the most high revealed the dream to him. The man didn't tell him because he didn't want to, he revealed it to him. And he told him what his dream was and what it meant. And he saved all of them. And he said, he praised the creator and said, it is he that revealed hidden things. So they have hidden things. They have manipulated things. Mm -hmm. So it is the spirit that is needed to help us to understand what they have manipulated in the yes. scriptures what they have hidden so that he can reveal them to us yeah. so that we can know what the truth is. Mm -hmm. And you know, just to piggyback real quick on what she was saying, what she was talking about honoring ancestors. What do we do at funerals? When they have a funeral, when someone pass, <clears throat> excuse me, we go to the wake, view the body, they go through the funeral process and they put them in the ground. What are you doing that whole time you're there? You're remembering, right? You're honoring. You, so what you is remembering? You're honoring them. So if honoring your ancestors is demonic, then wouldn't attending funerals be demonic? Uh, they need to understand when 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 someone <laughs> leaves this realm and what we call death die, this this physical death, at that point in time they become an ancestor. So exactly. with what he's saying, by when somebody dies, we go to a funeral. A funeral. They at that point in time, you have to understand that they now have become an ancestor of ours. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to harp on that. I was just using that as an example because there's other examples uh, yes. in, 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 the, um, in scripture that they have used for us to do the opposite. And you go like, now that makes sense that I understand that now. Yes. Queen Royal Daughter. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I wanted to piggyback on what Queen Brenda said. She, um, that the principles of Tatanzambi, all the laws and, and principles, they're booby trapped with blessings or cursing. So it's, you don't have to go and bring on a, a curse to yourself. You bring that curse or that blessing by the choice you make. Mm -hmm. If you follow, if you're obedient to his will, you bring the increase, the blessing for one of a better word. Yes. But if you don't, you bring that curse upon yourself. So if you set about that sequence of events, nobody else. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand even, you know, it's like when you tell a child, don't, don't put your hand in the fire, you'll get burned. They don't know what you're saying. They don't understand why you're telling them. They never experienced fire. So they don't know, and they'll try, but you're saying to them, don't do it. And it's the same thing Tatan Zambi told us. Do mm -hmm. not do this. If you choose to do this, this, this is what will happen to you. This is what will happen to you. But we didn't connect it. Yes. We didn't make the connection that things are, that these, um, his laws and principles comes with blessing or curses attached to them and embedded in them. Mm -hmm. Well, we didn't connect it because we have forgotten because they made us forget because, um, like I said, they didn't allow us on over here in America to, um, and it may have been a little different because I know over in the, uh, the islands, there was a little bit more freedom, even in New Orleans, there was a little bit more freedom than us because New Orleans at one time was owned by the French, along with Mississippi. Mississippi and New Orleans used to be one area owned by the French, and then they were bought out by the British. When the British came in, the British were more harsh. They did not allow our people to uh, participate 
in um, their culture. In New Orleans, they were able on Sundays to beat their drums, sing their songs and uh, of their, uh, what they remember. So, and that is where we know where we got a lot of uh, the jazz and stuff that came forth from New Orleans, but the British did not allow us to do that in the British part of America. Uh, they would beat our ancestors. So when you, when you fast forward to today, because our ancestors, they were smart. They were smart people. They did not want us to be eradicated off the earth. So they would do things for safety. So um, I have learned and am learning that everything was not taken away. There were some things left intact secretly um, that to help us identify one day that we are the people. And I was talking with someone about this this morning that's from Congo. And I was telling him uh, like, and, and we shared this before, we talked about this before, certain words. And I just found out something that my mom and grandmama used to do, they do in Africa. And I had no idea. I just thought it was something that they were doing, but they did not tell us because they were tortured if they did uh, their, their uh, culture. And I was like, wow, my mom and grandma, they used to do this. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna go back to doing this. It's nothing bad, you know, but um, it just goes to show that there are certain things that have not left us, but they had to stay secret as to why we did certain things that was part of our culture because of the danger that was brought with it. It, it could have meant a life if they found out that they were doing these things. And those little little pieces right there, you all was needed so that we can know who we are. Just like with the peanuts, I told you all, they call them goobers. My daddy, he called them goobers. And a lot of old folks down South where I'm from called them goobers. And in, in Guba, in Guba is a Kikongo word for the peanuts. And I told you all about tuta and tota, which is tote. tote. And mm -hmm. somebody asked me years ago, why you say tote for carry? And I couldn't explain to them why until a few years ago, I discovered that that was a Kikongo word for, for carry that we used to say. So these little small mm -hmm. things that even in my uh, research of my ancestry, I'm finding out more and more and more and more biblical names that are going back to like my great, great, great grandfather's name was... <clears throat> They had Davi, and then another speller was Dawa. And so that that was, and last name was House. My great-grandmother's last name was House, H-O-U-S-E. We know that S and Z is interchangeable in Bantu. When I went back further, the, the family spelled it with a Z, H-O-U-Z-E. His name was Dawa House. A Dawi, a Davi, a da, Dawidi House was his name. And that what was revealed to me, well, anyway, but the, the further I go, the more I see that they, even though they were English names, because they couldn't use their names, that there you all, if you have, and I'm quite sure a lot of you all, if you start researching your ancestry, you will find a lot of biblical names in your family lineage. They did that as a key so that you can know who you are. They are, they, they were very clever. They couldn't use it in their language, so they use it in the English language. It is a lot of biblical names in my family. Judah, and, and, and they spelled yeah. it even without an H in some place. Uh, uh, you, uh, Sarah, my great, 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 great grandmother was named Sarah. Her sister was named Judah. I had Dawi, uh, Dawa, Davi. Um, what else? It's a lot yeah, of them that I discovered. Lot. It is <laughs> packed deep. And I was just blown away. Yeah. Um... You know, uh, as she was talking, the other thing that came to me too was we were given um, Jesus. So uh, again, it uh, the topic is why did they uh, deny us of our history? They don't want us to know who we are because we are powerful people. So to keep us, yeah. So to keep us from, um, uh, keep us cursing ourselves, they made us focus on someone else to help us by the name of Jesus and put all our energies and our trust in Jesus. 
to come and save us and help us and deliver us. And that's, um, and that's another example, too, because they have us worshiping because we're not supposed to be. He's actually an ancestor of ours, Josiah. Yeah. He was actually black and he was a king, you all. And uh, that's why they mocked him and said king of Jews. He was an actual king. So yeah. there's a lot that they have hidden from us, but there's clues in the Bible. And then with the, the spirit, again, I tell uh, I said it will open up your eyes to a lot of things and, and you will, you will see the hidden pieces of the puzzles in the Bible, but they had, have, and I told my friend this, I said, he said greater works. As a matter of fact, where your daughter mentioned this, and I mentioned this to my friend again this morning, I said, uh, the scripture says that Josiah said that great, we should do greater than he greater works shall we do. Mm -hmm. And we know he did a lot of things. He healed the sick, raised, raised the dead, gave sight to the blind, and able to lame the wall, walk, walk on wall, all kinds of, things he did i said we can't do greater than the creator so he said we would do greater so that's the key right there right there that he is not the creator he's not mm -hmm. and so um they have in the christian church they have people worshiping Yesiah, and we're not supposed to be worshiping him only Tata and Zombie, only the sovereign and semi the yes. sovereign creator he is the only one to be worshiped so now they have you doing what they say that you were doing that you were, weren't supposed to do, which is worshiping an ancestor, because he's literally one of our ancestors. Remember in the book of, is it Deuteronomy or the Numbers of oh. Exodus, one of them, anyway. But yeah. it says, that he, uh, the most I told Masa said that I'm going to raise up a prophet like you from among your people and he will speak my words and then when you fast forward and go into the new testament josiah said these are not my words that i speak these are from the father well that goes back to show you who he was talking who he was talking about who he was going to raise up from amongst your people yes. our people so he's an ancestor and we're not supposed to be worshiping him mm -hmm. honor yes but worshiping no so exactly. that is another example of how they have us doing something that we should not be doing, which mm -hmm. is contrary to what the creator told us to do. So you see how they have created these plots, <laughs> these holes for us to fall into, these traps? Yep. Yaya Edward, you wanted to say something? Yes, and in, in listening to everything, uh, it, it brought back to my mind uh something that was said to me when i was in the military and i was uh in germany and me and another friend had a, a opportunity to go to um uh, amsterdam holland and uh while i was there and this this had never been said to me before i i uh visited this uh restaurant and when i went in there was a gentleman there that uh looked like me uh he invited me to his table and uh, i believe he was haitian I, i'm not sure but we, as we were talking uh he said uh what is your name and i said my name is edward and he said, your name means nothing. It has nothing to represent. It, it doesn't say anything and you carry that name, but it is a name that has nothing. And I'm sitting there and I'm saying to myself, you know, what is this man talking about? I got a name of royalty. I got a name of kings. And he says again, your name means nothing. And he went on to tell me what his name meant. And it meant this and it meant that. And uh, he kept telling me that I was nothing. I had no identity because your name means nothing. And I didn't know any better. This is the first time I had ever been told this. And as far as uh, race and all of that, uh, I had a few 
uh, bats with some people or something like that. You know, literal stuff. Somebody calling you a nigger or whatever. You know, back in the days or something like that. But never have somebody ever told me that my name was nothing. You know, and so fast forward and going through the years and knowing what I know now, it's all because my identity or my father's and his father's identity was taken away from them and given another name. Mm -hmm. Yes. I believe that this, this is not the name that my father's father's father uh, was given to him. So my name, and I'm thinking that I'm all that. And I wasn't after this man got through telling me I was nothing, you know. So uh, now I do understand why he told me that. But I was too angry at him to sit down and have a conversation about why he said it. Mm. I was too angry. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I went away leaving there with this on my mind. And not one, not knowing why he said that, you know. But now I, I, I do know that now, you know. Uh, I just wanted to share that. That's all. Yeah, I, I can understand you being angry because uh, <laughs> me back in the day during that time, somebody told me my name meant nothing. I probably would have went upside their head, you know. <laughs> what you mean yeah. my name mean nothing? I am somebody. Pow, you know. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, um, all praises, you know, to the most high. Um, I mean, the way we've been treated, you know, um, it, it was all about belittling us. And um, again, to say that we are nothing. When, when actually, we are something. We're somebody. We're royalty. We're royalty. Yes. You know, and, and this is what we have to get back to and accept and walk in it. Because this is who we are. And we're powerful people. When we speak, things will happen. This is who we are. We are our father's children. Queen royal daughter. Yes, ma'am. I'm like Jeremiah today. I can't stay quiet. Oh, yeah, um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, the thing about this, when he said honor your mother and father, honor your ancestors, like I said before, th there's embedded in them the blessings and the cursings, mm -hmm. the increase and the curses. Yes. So now when we start doing that, it says so that your days may be long upon the land. Mm -hmm. So your health is associated with this. Yep. Uh, Sickness, realignment. <laughs> yep. Also, there's the blessings of our father Abraham, physical blessings of the land and the wealth mm. that come with claiming your father. When you claim your father, you claim your inheritance. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Exactly. Beautiful. <laughs> Spiritually <laughs> and physically. Exactly. <laughs> if you disrespect your father, is he gonna he's gonna write you out of the will? Mm -hmm. Basically, that's the way Satan Zambi placed it. So now, even in this kingdom, our names, you know, mm -hmm. called out to our father. So they didn't even want us to speak our names because it will destroy them. Mm -hmm. Our yes. words, our religion, our spirituality, our names. They could not have us repeating it because it will destroy them. Mm -hmm. So that's why our identity is so important because it is attached to destroying their kingdom. Yes. Yes. 
Negeta. And also, um, Roy, your daughter, also to add to what you're saying, um, if a child deny their parent, let's bring it home physically, you know, in the physical sense. Deny your parents, and they said that you're nothing, you're evil, you're demonic. Your parents, if your children tell you this, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. It's going to hurt them, and, and you know that's going to push the child away because of that. And the parent, you're not going to receive, as you stated, that protection because parents protect. Mm -hmm. Remember that, you all. Parents protect. That is one of those inherited rights as a child. I'm not going to allow anybody to harm my child. I'm just not going to do it. I remember one time my oldest son was coming home from school. He was way down at the bottom of the hill. And because a, a, a parent knows their child, I said, something's wrong with him. And he was way down the hill. And by the time he made it up to me, he was upset. He was mad. You could see it. And I said, what's wrong with you? And he said some boy hit him. The boy was much older than him and larger than him. And it was because he got into it with the boy's sister. And they was talking about each other, parents, your daddy is, your mama is, you know how kids do. And so when my son reciprocated to the little girl, said, well, your mama, da, 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 whatever he said, her brother hit him. And so when he told me that this boy that's older than me hit me, Okay, that mama mode, that mama bear kicked in, y'all. Y'all know me. I said, get in the car. Which direction did he go? So he <laughs> told me which direction he went. By the time I made it around the corner, his mama was at the corner waiting on me. I told her, I got out of the car, I said, ma'am, I don't know you. You don't know me. But your child put his hands on my son. And I don't appreciate that. And I told her what happened. I said, your child don't know his parents. And my child don't know your children's parents. Now, granted, neither one of them should have, should have been talking about each other's parents. But your son had no right to put his hands on my child. And she looked at her son and she grabbed him. You come on in here. But by the same token, when my child did wrong, I addressed it. He got suspended from school. I didn't know it because he knew he was going to get a beat down. He was a jokester and he pulled a chair from a little girl when she was sitting down and the little girl had, had surgery and she fell and hurt herself. And so he wasn't going to school. And, well, he was going to school. That's what it was. He got suspended, but he was going to school because he was scared to tell me. And we, I knew the principal because the principal when I was in school was a teacher. And so he called me, he like, Brenda. Raymond is coming to school and he's suspended. He, he said, I suspect he's afraid of telling you this. He said, I'm going to let him stay in school today, but this is what happened. And so he told me what happened. He said, I, I could not let that go. He said, that was a Cotty and Pimba. I just used that word. He said, I couldn't let that go because the parents called me. He said, I had to deal with that. I said, I understand. So I got him in the car. I found out where they live. I took my son to that house. Hi, ma'am. I understand there was a, a, a interaction that happened at school and your daughter was hurt. Mm -hmm. I said, my son got something to say to your daughter. She called her to the door. I said, you tell her what you got to say. And I made him apologize. But it goes both ways. But I said all that to say that you have that protection from your parents. But once you disconnect yourself from your parent and you say, I don't want to have nothing to do with them, you lose that right also, like where your daughter said. That's one of those rights that you lose or that protection. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but once you reconnect back to your parents, they're waiting on you because they love you. Yes. They're actually hurt that you feel that they are demonic and that you don't want to have anything to do with them. They're waiting on you. Nkosi Kangi. Yes, sir. Yes, um, I was just um, wanting to just kind of uh, kind of back on what the royal daughter was saying about and in this awakening, I think about how for the Bantu people, 
we became aware of our father, uh, his name, you know, one of his characteristics, Tatan Zombie, and how the enemy is so conniving. He wanted to try to make us think that there was something wrong with that word zombie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. trying to relate it to walking dead or something yeah. evil. Yeah. Yeah. No, that don't sound word. right. Totally different yeah. word. Yeah, totally different mm-hmm. word. Yeah. Yep. And so that's how conniving is. No, I, I, man, I'm proud of Tatan Zombie and my father. I, I do say it. I love it. I honor it. I praise it because I am reconnecting to my heritage. Yes. And uh, that was a way that, he, mm-hmm. that the enemy was trying to get mm-hmm. us to not reconnect back to our heritage. No, that, that's wicked. No, it's mm-hmm. not. <laughs> yeah, but when you start breaking that word down, once we start learning Kikongo, and a lot of us on here, we, we already know the breakdown of the word. It's, it, and it's packed. That one word it is, is packed. If, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, we have a sister, Queen Cynthia. Uh, just break down in zombie for her because she's learning. Uh, you know, I can't do all of it because it's a lot. That's uh, a teaching in itself. I I'll do this. I I do one 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 thing uh, out of that. Let's keep it simple. Remember, I told you all that Z and S is interchangeable. Remember, I just told you all that not long ago with the name House. Mm-hmm. Okay, so. And in zombie, it's spelled N Z A M B I or N Z A M B E, right? In zombie or in zombie, right? Mm-hmm. So the Z and S is interchangeable. And in there, you have root words. So you have samba, where you get the word samba, right? Mm-hmm. Sambila is the day of prayer. So in zombie, in zombie, Sambila, the day of prayer, the day that we pray to the creator is in his name. Does it make sense, Cynthia? So the root yes, word of Samba, Sambila, all that is in the name in zombie. So essentially it's saying uh, the day of prayer, uh, Samba. This is the day we pray to in zombie, Sambila to pray. This is the one that we pray to, right? The day of prayer. That's what you're saying. Yes. It's Samba is prayer. the day, is the day mm-hmm. of, yeah. The day that we honor the most high. Sambila to pray. The, he's the one that we pray to because that root word Samba, Samba is in Zambi. It's a, um, like Zambia. Zambia, Zambia is, is in that word. It's packed in there. So to pray you, uh, or pray is in that word zombie. So how you uh how you how do you write in zombie? I want to make sure I got the right uh uh right right of the word. N B N Z N Z. Okay. Yeah, and the, and the N is almost kind of like silent, and they use N in front of a lot of words. Zombie. Okay. So, zombie. You saying it? But it's zombie. It's almost like you swallow. Okay. okay, so N Z A M A M M B I B. Uh huh. I. And then sometimes okay. people spell it with the E. And that M B E M B I, it means something. And the N Z means something as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like I said, I don't want to get all into it because that's another lesson. So. I, I know we had two. I just, I just felt like this is y'all been in, I think been in about three weeks or two weeks now. And it's like y'all like it's like an intermediate class. And I'm I'm in the I'm in the baby stages, you know, you know, and when uh um and Panji Randall, we started out with this with this uh with this long time ago, you know, learning different words. I had to go pull my notes. I'm in the midst of moving next week. So I'm gonna go back and pull my notes because we were learning. And then my sister was telling me, sister, uh, my, my, Matilda? It, yeah. Uh, Ma- Marquise. Uh, Marquise. Marquise. Oh. She, was, uh, sharing, she was sharing with me that like uh, Shabbat Shalom, that's Yiddish, that's Yiddish. She's so right. now we go, we going back to learning the the right pronunciation of his name, his holy name. Yeah. You know, so it's like I'm like at the beginning, and I don't want y'all to step back 
I want y'all to keep going forward, you know, and I just make my notes from there. Okay, okay. And that word zombie, it is in the apocrypha as well. Okay. So they the removed the second estrus. Yeah. The second estrus. So they removed the books for a reason. Yeah. So it's it's even tribes. Our, our Bantu tribes are in there. I showed somebody uh Nguni. Is Randy on? No, she's not on. Nguni, the Nguni tribe is in there. They descend from Naphtali, I think in the Bible says. They, they descend, but but it's there. But they alter things and change things up to try to fool us. Mm -hmm. But when you when your eyes are open, when those scales and Tatan Zambi remove those scales from your eyes and you read the scripture, you see it from a different light now. I mean, because your eyes are just open. It's like, I remember when I went to get my um, eyes checked some years ago, I, I and he put the glasses on me when he ordered the glasses. I told him, wow, it looks like you just took some Windex and just <laughs> cleansed my window, like my vision. He said, you didn't even know you had an issue, did you? Until it was corrected. That was deep, y'all. <laughs> that was deep. So- M Mama Brenda. Yes. Uh, Sister Cynthia had someone post on a, uh, her social media last week that she said something about Bantu, that we're Bantu. Mm -hmm. And I, my understanding is they said Bantu is not a people, it's a language. I said, they don't know yeah. what they're talking about. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, I remember seeing no, it. No, 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 no. They will tell you any and everything just to keep us all confused and lost. Actually, it's different mm -hmm. variation. Um, because the, 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 our language is, it used things interchangeable and there's Vanu, Banu, and actually it's written on the walls in Egypt, our people, because our people were in Egypt, but they hide all this information from us and they hide Egypt and the truth of Egypt from us because our people were there. Our people ruled over there. So yes. Banu, when you research it, Banu was on the walls in Egypt and they went over there then. So how can one, somebody said that a white man came up with that word. No, he didn't. This was, this is, on, it's on the walls of, of Kenneth. It's referencing us when we lived over there. Banu, research it, you all. Maybe I'll do a teaching on it one time. So no, Bantu it, are the people. Abantu, yes. I think in the Zulu said Abantu, Abba into into people, Abba Father, the Father's people. No, how in the world the white man gonna give us the name Bantu <laughs> when it's telling us we're the the Father's people, and they changed it up line and saying they're the father, Father's people. Come on, you all, let's keep it real now. He didn't give us that name. They were they were using that word when he came. That is a lie. All they do is a lie. So just be mindful of that and be cautious of what you believe that come out of their mouth, especially when it pertains to us and our history. And and the, and the thing that that I got from from you, Mama Brenda. I, I didn't realize until recently, Bond two kings ruled in Egypt in Kamat. Yep. As a matter of fact, King Tut, I read an article. That's how I discovered this. I read an article, and it's in they have it in a just store. Just store, you know, is a peer-reviewed journal article. But I, that's not where I first read it. I read it somewhere else. And King Tut actually was Bantu. They changed his name up. They really are not translating the hieroglyph correctly because actually I'm gonna give you all a little secret if you don't know, it's Bantu language. Mm -hmm. It's Bantu language. They have hidden a lot from us and lied a lot. So they transpose letters in his name. Um, I have to get the article to, cause it's, it's a long name. They transpose letters. And uh, it was this African guy, this guy from Africa, using because he know the language, was saying that this this was very familiar to, to our language. And so he started researching King Tut 
And uh, this particular king that had the name similar to what they said King Tut name was, he was huge. And over in Africa, he said that the, the, the mothers would use it to scare the kids. And when they tell them to do something, they don't do it. And you sitting around like King, and they called his name, like whatever his name, I can't remember it offhand. So he said, let me go research King Tut. He found out King Tut had, they had it documented, the, the Europeans, that he had some type of disorder where his body was larger than normal and he had to have special clothing made, just like this, this, this king that they talked about in Africa. And they just transposed words. So he was Bantu. Actually, they did some uh, DNA research and they found out that a lot of the, um, the quote unquote kings or pharaohs of Egypt had DNA from those that are in sub-Sahara Africa, which is where the Bantu people dwell, where they live. And this is their research. Just like when that guy was surprised when he found out Y'all seen this floating around where this they found this another uh, mummy and in Egypt and he was black because they've been telling these lies for so long to actually they really they really think that white people were over in Egypt. No, they came and they invaded and the, the Ptolemies were white and that's what they show people when you see the Ptolemies, which is the <laughs> later uh, uh, um, version of those that ruled. That is when the the Greeks came in. The Greeks were the Ptolemies and they ruled, but. No, the black people. This on the wall. Black people always putting a white Cleopatra out there. You know who they were. Yeah. Go ahead. Um, there were a couple of hands up, you know, and I, I ask you to forgive me. Uh, Queen Makisi and Mama Queen Mama Nicholas. Uh, I know you all wanted to say something earlier. If you can uh, remember, please uh, take this time and. Uh, say what you wanted to say. See me, everyone. See I just want, while Mama Brenda was speaking um, and she spoke about being disconnected, that I think um, Roy, Queen Royal both also mentioned it, that our um, inheritance and protection are tied in with our ancestors. Yes, and then it, 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 it clicked that when our ancestors, Tatan Zambi is our ancestor. Yes. yes. And so when our, when our ancestors turned away from him and they went after other gods, they disconnected themselves from him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that would have been why the wicked were able to come in and overpower us. And also our power and our protection are tied in with our obedience. So once we become disobedient, the protection goes, the power goes. It's like when they were um they came against Jericho and AI. Although Jericho was powerful, more fortified and everything, because they were obedient, they were able to overpower them easily. They overcame them, they won easily. Then when they came against AI, which was much smaller and weaker, they were overpowered because of their disobedience. Yes. And so it's the same thing of us. As we separated ourselves from Katan Zambi, the power went off, the protection went off, and we became open prey for the wicked. Yes. yes. That, that came to me, so I just wanted to mention it. Yes, and, But good. I also want to say, to add, just to end it, as we come back to him, and as we reconnect with him, mm -hmm. and as we continue to walk in obedience to him, yeah. The protection and the power come right. You'll be able to walk to continue walking in it again. Yes, yes. Uh, it was a, 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 a pastor that we were um, connected with. He was awakened, and uh, he was teaching the teaching the awakening. Uh, but he said, when you look at the uh, the ten words, the commandments, he said those are laws, and um, you know that's what they call them laws. He said you obey them you receive the increases of the law but you disobey then you receive the curses of the law so it, it works the same you know uh that's how it is with the most high you obey him you receive the increase you disobey you receive the curses um queen makisi vana queen yes ma'am see me see me family yeah me see me it's so good to be uh, with you all on another Samba 
Oh, uh, good to great. have you. Welcome. <laughs> Thank Always. you, Matondo. Matondo. Um, it's been a lot to say it. And uh, I also believe, you know, the damage was done even before the slave trade. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because, oh, yeah. You know, the slave trade was like the seventh captivity. Actually, so, it, was, like, it, was, it was more than a second. <laughs> no, the seventh, number seven. Oh, you said seventh. Okay. Yes, the, the, the seventh, seventh captivity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, the most high, you know, Tatan Zombie, he knew way back when, when he gave uh, Bana that vision of his people, mm -hmm. how many times it was going to take. And in saying all of that, not only I understand now about honoring our ancestors and honoring our forefathers, mm -hmm. but I still think it's really important that we also continue to repent. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. For them. Mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. know, and it's not like you know we're we're so righteous and holy mm -hmm. that you know Tata Zombie he saw all of us, he saw all of us, mm -hmm. like right now he saw all of us back way when, yeah, because our total seed could have been destroyed, yes, where mm -hmm. our ancestors just refused to come into a land that they did not know. So they, they went into the ocean and just died in the ocean, jumped over a board or whatever, and you know, the sea ended. So sometimes zombie, you know, it, it's like it it fills me up because he saw me. He saw me way back when <laughs> that I would receive the truth, <laughs> that I would repent, that I would fall back in line and want to be into covenant with him. You know, and to be and and to be obedient to what he's asked us to do. So I think it's really important that we have to repent, remain repentful mm. of what our ancestors refused to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and, know, and I want to I want to make a comment on um, Nkosi Kangi Wai Zombie Randall. Mm -hmm. when you know he was he was teaching us he's been really instrumental in our life in me and my husband's life my sister's life i just could not process a zombie i just could not process it i'm like how is that the most high's name i'm like what a zombie i just could not process it so one morning i got up out the bed I stood up on the side of the bed and the most high spoke to me. He said, I am Tata and Zombie. Ooh. I'm not sure if I shared it a couple of weeks ago, mm. being on the call or not, but he spoke to me. He spoke to me. I would never forget it. The most high spoke to me. Hallelujah. Mm. He told me I am Tata and Zombie. Yeah. Mm. Mm. And I'm like, Ooh. <laughs> You know, and it's like the light bulb came on and he gave me peace. Mm. Because, you know, once nobody could give you peace like Tata Zombie could give you peace. Yes. Once yes. once he gives you once he gives you peace, I'm sold out. I'm I'm sold out. You know, it's no more going, it's no more going backwards. I'm just sold out. Yes. And then I have a zeal. And then once I get it, once I know the most high spoke to me. I share it with others. Bet you you know, I share with my sister and my, my, my another sister is on online today as well. So good to see her. Yes, yes. And it's, and it's just exciting. Well, I just could not process it. So I just tell people, you know, just to continue to pray. How I woke up in the first place was me praying, asking the Most High to show me, to reveal to me the secrets of his word. I knew it was more to the walk than Christianity. Yes. I watched the video the other day by Kephas, how he taught in that video, saying that the, the church is designed and was set up and taught to keep us satisfied in poverty, mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. always, to keep us in, in want mm -hmm. and to keep us in poverty, have us to be satisfied in poverty, mm -hmm. knowing, you know, we want to make it at the end or whatever. It was all set up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You know, to keep us oppressed and to keep us in bondage. That's all Christianity, Christian sanity mm -hmm. is. That's what I call it now. It's nothing but bondage. It is. Our people are bound. It is. And like you all said earlier, those that look like us, they're keeping our people bound. Mm -hmm. That's they're right. They're going to be judged. They're going to be judged, though, because some of these, a lot yeah. of, uh, not some, a lot of these pastors know. Because I remember when men yeah, was talking to you, because you all know that he was a minister and he had a church. He was a pastor at one time. So we we know we know a lot of them, you know, yeah, they, hung they around them. So them. he was talking to one of them, you know, early on and was sharing with him that we're the people. And in short, he said, my people are not ready for this. And I told him, I said, I wish I would have been here and been on that conversation. I said, I would have told him, first of all, they're not your people. Then I would have told him, some people are not ready to hear about Jesus, but you still push Jesus. These people are grown. You don't make the determination what they're ready for. They're not kids. Mm. I said, I would have let him know that. You know, um, Queen, you, you said something and it resonated with me so. Um, <laughs> You said, uh, I mentioned about this awakening. And um, you said that Tata and Zombie saw us. You say he saw yeah. you. And mm -hmm. what struck me, hallelujah, what struck me was this. When Tata and Zombie said, I have a remnant, hey, hallelujah, he saw everybody here. He saw you and he said, I have a remnant, a remnant who will return to me, a remnant who will stand for me, a remnant who will worship in honor of me, a remnant who will walk upright before me, a remnant who will uphold my word. I have a remnant. And that remnant, I will return to the land. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, Thank you. you. Hallelujah. 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 He saw us, he saw us family. He saw us. Titan Zombie saw us. Saw each and every one of us. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. 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 When he told about about his seed. Yeah, that's what I was getting in that scripture. He said, you and your seed. Hallelujah. You all know what a seed is. That seed hey. is in you. So you were there. When he was giving out that <sighs> promise, because he said, your seed. We all were there when that promise, that oh, covenant was made, because we are the seed. Hallelujah. So we were there. Hallelujah. We heard it. We witnessed Thank it. You. We were there, you all. Mm. And I was just looking at a scripture in Proverbs talk about the wicked will not go unpunished in the in the in the seed that's uh -huh. us will be increased. So the wicked are not Thank going you. to go unpunished. And us, the seed, we are the seed, meaning the descendant. Uh, uh, yeah. We're gonna be restored back to what they have taken from us. But we Hallelujah. need to declare and call back yeah, everything yeah. that they had the enemy has taken from us. Everything. everything. Call everything. it back. Call it back because uh, it's your call it back. You have rights. As a child of the king, Mama uh, Nicholas was saying that Tata and Zambi is our father. He is our ancestors. And that is what we is taught in our spirituality. Why do you think we call him Tata? Tata is father. Baba is father. Abba is father. They got Abba from Baba. Yes, they yes. switch and transpose words. 
He's our father. That's why he's called in send me where you get the word semen from, which is seed. That's why I say you are the seed. You were there. He is the in send me, which is he is our creator. That is why we are supposed to honor our parents because they are co-creators of us. Why do you think Josiah said, prepare me about it? I'm going to show you all something mm -hmm. about the revelation that only the spirit will reveal. He said, prepare me a body. I will go. And see, people think it was just Jesus. I'm going to use the right word. Josiah, that that pertains to. No, his spirit was there. And he said, prepare me a body. So he had to prepare a body for the spirit to come forth. And then he told, who was that? That prophet. He said, before you were formed in the belly of your mother, I knew yes. you. you. How did he know him before he was born? Because his yes. spirit was there with him, you all. Jeremiah. Yes. Jeremiah. His spirit was up there and a body was created. How? By the mother and the father. So these wicked people that's coming up with these laws talking about a man and a man can marry a woman. That defies everything about the creator and the way things mm -hmm. were established in his principles. Because the man and the woman is a representative of him. I'm not going to go That's any right. deeper than that because some people not ready. I just say this. We are co-creators of the most high. We create. So when a child disrespect their parents, their, I, that was Cephas and, 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 and um, Jonathan said that their uh, parents used to say, I'm God in this house. Now, when you understand our spirituality, you can understand why they said, I'm God in mm -hmm. this house. Mm -hmm. Now, over here mm -hmm. in America, we didn't literally say, I'm God in this house, but they would say, I'm the head of this house. That's what they used to tell mm -hmm. us over here. I'm the head of this yeah. house. You're the mm -hmm. child. Yeah. You stay in the child place. So mm -hmm. it's the same difference. In other words, you respect me because I'm the head over this house, not you. I am the chief. I am the king. I am the queen. And I have to let my, my son know this is my house. I'm the queen of this house. You don't rule in this house. When you get your house, you rule that, but not over here. I have orders. I said, I have certain things that I want done. And you have to obey that while you're in my house. I said, if you disobey me, you cutting your days short. That's what they used to teach us back in the day. Did they not? Yeah. Uh, uh, you Randall? taught that too. Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. You cut your days short when you disrespect your parents. They, they, they knew. They, they knew that we were still the people, and that when you disrespect your parents, you're disrespecting your ancestors. Did y'all catch that? I did. <laughs> Got it. I did. Got it. <laughs> William Royal daughter. I won't, yes, <laughs> I won't give nothing for my upbringing. My sister and I, you know, I tell you, our upbringing was, was different. You know, we were, you know, my mom used to say, you know, we would look down the street and see other kids or, you know, you can't do what they do. You know, you can't go where they go. You can't do what they do. You know, we, are we were different. We were set apart. You know, we were set apart. We couldn't do what we did do. Yeah. You know, and I won't give anything for my, my our upbringing. None at all. Yes, yes, yes. That old school. Well, that was a, that's, that, that's the best teaching. You know. Yes. That, that old school teaching. Grandmama, old school. You're right. Yeah, grandmama was still involved in our lives and would tear you up. Yes. And you had respect for your <laughs> elders, if, even if the elders lied on you. They was telling the truth. I done told y'all how I done got a whipping because somebody uh that, that, that <laughs> well, she laughed. Uh, oh, I got a whipping because a lady thought I was doing something to her because she was across the street and saw it, and it wasn't true. And she told my mama, and I said, No, I did not do that. My mama said she ain't gonna lie. She she didn't lie, but she misinterpreted it wasn't for her. It was like <laughs> You I can't do it, room. but it wasn't to her. It was to some kids. It was in her direction. <laughs> but it was to those kids that was doing it to me. So I did it back in. I was real young. I was like maybe 10 years old. <laughs> and because she told my mom I did that, and I said, no, I did not do that to her. I could tell my mom I did it to them kids because I wasn't going to get a whooping anyway just for doing it because I should have done it, y'all. You know. So either way it go, I was in trouble. 
Queen Royal Daughter. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm trying to get to you. <laughs> That's okay. That's what the discussion is about. You know, I was saying that, you know, when, when, yeah, yeah. Abraham, Abraham Mel, met Melchizedek. Yes. The priest of the high priest of, of Tatan Zambi. He was Christ before Christ had a body. Mm -hmm. And uh, they made that covenant. He made that covenant with Abraham because he had he had given Abraham land and he had given him physical blessing. So that covenant was made through Abraham. So when we recognize Abraham as our father, we come under that covenant of the blessings of wealth, mm -hmm. the increase of the land. So that's one of the scariest things for, for, for the enemy because they don't want to give back that wealth. Oh, mm -hmm. it's coming back. When we come <laughs> back, to again, that wealth will come back to us. We don't have to ask for it. We don't have to beg for it. Yeah. When we come back into alignment with our father, Abana, mm -hmm. so it was given to him to be passed on to his seed. So when Abraham met Melchizedek, he gave Melchizedek at ten percent, and when you read in Isaiah six thirteen, it says a tenth shall come back. Uh, so a tenth, mm. the tenth that he gave Mel Melchizedek was the remnant that is going to come back, and that tenth shall inherit. He said, "So thy holy seed shall be the substance thereof." Hallelujah. So when, when, when we acknowledge our father, Abraham, we bring that wealth back to us. Because the other things come with Tatan Zambi, but that wealth that he had given to Abraham is what we inherit when we acknowledge Abraham as our father. That's why they try so hard for us not to, to they try to so hard to say we are not. Abraham's children and they want us to believe that because then they have to give up the wealth. Yeah. <laughs> where did where did Abana come from? That's, Ur of the we gotta, we, that's how we gotta uh -huh. look at. If we look at the area where he came from, we know, you know, what color he was. Just like with um, oh, it's escaping me. What's that man's name? Nebuchadnezzar. Um Mm, it's another one I'm thinking of. What was the first city builder? Nimrod. 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 Uh, his father was had some position in in uh, with Nimrod, right? Yeah, Abraham's father. His father. Terror. Terror. He was a priest. He was a yes. priest of Nimrod. Nimrod, mm -hmm. we know, was a yes. black man. We all know this. They mm -hmm. called him a mighty warrior. So all those yes. people were black. Mm -hmm. all were black. Nimrod, uh, Abraham's father, told Nimrod about Abraham destroying his gods, and Nimrod put Abraham in prison. <laughs> he he actually we tried yeah, to kill him because they saw his scar. And it was the same uh, scenario as the three Hebrew boys mm -hmm. uh, casting him into the furnace uh, because uh, Abana and his brother Heron uh, was tossed into a furnace. And uh, mm -hmm. by them being tossed in the furnace, the soldiers who tossed him in the furnace, they died because of how hot it was. And uh, Abraham's brother died in the furnace. Yeah. That's why the scriptures wow. say it that uh, uh, Haran, um, uh, Haran died before his father. So that's twofold, literally. His father, Terah, saw him die, and he died before his father, Terah, died. So it's twofold. Wow. But it was Abana that was walking around in the furnace. The protection, divine protection. We I have divine wow. protection, but you... What, if, if, if you have, if I have an inheritance and I didn't know that inheritance was left to me, I didn't know it was there. I can't, I can't claim it. 
So we have to know our divine rights, our divine inheritance to receive it and yeah. to claim back what the enemy has stolen. Call it back to us. Yeah. It's mine. It belongs to me. And I call it back. I reclaim it. Yes. Everything that yes. the enemy yes. took, every Everything. physical, every spiritual Everything. inheritance yeah. that's mine, yeah. I call it back. I to call me. it back. Call Hallelujah. it back. Remember, power I call it back. Tongue. I call we it are back. our Father. We're created in His image. Speak it. Speak it. Call it, it back. Call, back. It back. call it back. Call it back. Call it back. Call it back. back to you. Some of you I are healers. You come from the lineage of you. Call that knowledge back. I call it back. Call it back. Reclaim it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're no longer yeah. going to allow the enemy hey, to trample over us because we know they said knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. He said, my people perish for lack of knowledge because they reject knowledge. i never forget a preacher was trying. They always use this. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And I asked him, I said, what does it say after that, though? And he looked at me, huh? I said, what does it say after that? We were starting to wake up around this time, y'all. We were still in church, but we were starting to wake up. Things were starting to kind of turn in our heads. I said, it says because they reject knowledge. He said, because you reject knowledge, I'm going to reject your children. So it's a lot of people still doing that today, right? Mm -hmm. Our loved ones, we try to share this truth to them. What do they do? Reject. They reject it. Yeah, reject. but, yeah, but, or but. I mm -hmm. believe, I, when you say I, versus what the truth is, you are now subjecting yourself as the creator and saying, no, this is what it is. That is a form of pride. Hmm. No, I believe. I did that and I showed multiple, multiple scriptures. Oh, I understand that. I knew this, but I don't believe. We've heard this out of several people. But, but I, that but I, I. So they're lifting up <coughs> self. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. And then the other thing I've got, Mama Brenda, is, well, I guess I could kind of kind of believe what you say if you can give me all the scriptures for what you say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I ran into that, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know I got to have the scriptures. Uh, Brother Tommy, what I tell people now, because some of our people that say they are awake are like that. They, they, some of them don't believe in the New Testament, but all they believe is the Old Testament. Well, the scripture is the Old Testament is the Old Testament is, and you know what I told them? And I don't, I don't care. If, I'm at a point in my life. I don't care what you think about me. I don't care what you feel about me. I know what I know because of what Tata and Zombie is revealing to me because of the prayers that I have put forth for me. So I don't care what you think. So I tell them, <laughs> for one. I said, I don't limit the creator to pages and books. I said, he's a spirit. Inget. I said, I don't limit him to pages and books, especially one that has been manipulated by the very hands that have enslaved us and colonized our people in Africa and yep. stealing our wealth. Why? I said, I don't put limits on him. I said, I don't know about you, I said, and I told somebody this, I said, but my creator is more than pages in a book. Yep. You can get that. You can get that. This has been really, really interesting. You know, uh, <clears throat> Brother Edward had, uh, Yaya Edward, had said something earlier too when he said that he believed that the Most High will uh, make provisions for us. And yes, he will. He has made provisions for us. And um, there are some that have gone before us into the land. They are what we call forerunners. And they're setting up some things. Tata and Zombie is using them to put things in place so that when the return comes, when we come home, that there will be some things in place as well. We each have something to do. 
And um, a lot of us um, will be doing some teaching and instructing, you know, but we all will know truly what it is that we're to do. Um, but we're going to get back to that community. And that community will be established. And it is what we see as the kingdom of Tata and Zambi that will be established forever. We are his people, and he is our Nzambi. And it will be established forever. So all Kimball, the Natata Nzambi, Ibungu, Tulendo, Akongo, Sunini, Nanini, Amanda, Awa, Ibulu, Ibulu. Hallelujah. We give him honor, praise, and Kimball glory. And we honor our righteous, pristine, holy Nkulu, our ancestors, those who walked up right before him and completed their work that they were given to do. Hallelujah. It is them whom we seek to guide us and to carry us through to help us in this journey. So all praises to the Most High and family. We love you. Is there something else you want to We say? love you too. I just want to read yeah. the scripture to, uh, to them when uh, um, the sister, I can't remember who it was, was saying about uh, the seed. Uh, I mean that we were there and you were saying about the seed. Mm -hmm. And it says, and <clears throat> Abram fell on his face. I'm coming from Genesis 17 chapter. And Abana fell on his face. And the most I talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you. And you shall be a father of many nations. Neither shall your name anymore be called Abram, but thy name shall, but th thy name shall be called Abana, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful and will make nations of thee and kings shall come from you out of thee. And I, this is the most high, I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. What is he talking about seed? That which is going to come from his Lord. So that is all his children. Yes. So we are the seed. So a covenant was made with us. We have a covenantal relationship with the Most High. These people Absolutely. In, Christianity, mm -hmm. in Christianity can lie all they want and say that the mm -hmm. church replaced the people with the replacement theory. Lie. But they lie does not cancel <laughs> out mm -hmm. what the Most High have done. If yeah. he said it, that's, right. that's what he meant. And it's everlasting. Right. And it's written in stone. Yes. And the, the sun, the moon, and all the elements bear witness to what he said. He mm -hmm. made an everlasting right. covenant with our father. He said in us, his seed. Yes. yes. He and said that. in their generation for an everlasting covenant to be Jeez. unto the most high and then unto thy seed after thee. You see, you about to get something else started now. Because <laughs> regardless of what we have gone through, the slavery that our ancestors have uh, gone through, even to this very day, we are yet in this covenant relationship mm -hmm. with Dada and Zambi. He has not yes. forgotten about us. He know who you are. Yes. So, Hallelujah. So those people that committed a, a identity theft, <laughs> If you are the people, you should have the sovereign protection over there in that land. Because when we go back into the land and possess what belongs to us, we will have the sovereign protection of the Most High. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and just let me stress, when we go back into that land, not the land you're in, but when we go back to the land that Tata and Zambi have chosen, the real land, the real land. Mm -hmm. honey. Yes. That they stealing from us. Because the land that they're in right. is flowing with wind, <laughs> sand. <laughs> okay. They don't even have no water over there, y'all. It's dry. Right. It's, it's dry. 
You plant something, it might, might grow, but it's dry, okay? <laughs> and their wealth comes from um, tourism. Yes. But so. when we go home <laughs> to our land, the land our God has now gave us, it is flowing we with no money. money. Queen. Queen. <laughs> and they're getting money from all these other countries. Yes, they are. So they are not self-sustainable. Just, just look at that, that, that honey that just flowed up in Uganda right. <laughs> recently. All right. <laughs> but you know what? Y'all know what's happening over in China. So a word to the wise, to the Chinese, to the Chinese and everybody else that's over in our land, still in our wealth. Mm. You better get it back and you better leave. Yes. All that yes. flooding that's been going on, over called it back. destruction going over there in their land. More is coming Ooh. their way. Y'all better wake up. Y'all better anything. wake up. I'm trying to give you all mm -hmm. the Y'all better wake up. Destruction. That was the beginning. Yes. Yes. That's it's going to increase. It okay. will increase. Yes. Yes, Mary. Yes. It's going to increase. It's going to get worse. Yes, it will. Yes. Mm -hmm. The welling and gnashing of teeth is going to be the other nations. Queen yes. Queen Royal. Mm -hmm. Queen Royal Daughter. Yes, ma'am. Yes, I want. I just wanted to piggyback on what y'all were saying about the land and what Mama Brenda said about us being a seed. It says, um, and the tent shall return and shall be eaten as a teal tree and as an oak whose substance is in them. When they cast their leaves, so the holy seed shall be the substance thereof. So we will be buried. We will be one with the land. Mm -hmm. you, can't, you won't be able to tell us apart. The land will not reject us. Nope. Because nope. their land is rejecting them. Mm, that's so right. We need to look at that because, you know, the Bible itself says we will be one with the land. The land will know us. Mm -hmm. It will know that is is um is king is back mm. and by now the land is in uproar because it's fighting for its king. Mm -hmm. Our land wow. is for us. It's her children. We because he doesn't it. recognize them. He recognizes and, us. Exactly. Yes. And that's what they're afraid of. They, <laughs> y'all, they know who they took into captivity. Yes, they do. They know who we are. Mm -hmm. And they're very afraid of this awakening. Everything that's happening now that they're doing, it has to do with us, you all. Trust me. It has to do with us in our land. Uh, they're trying to prevent what they know is going to happen. They don't. If we come in the diaspora because they know how we are, and this is no disrespect to our family on the continent because they are awakening too to who they are. Mm -hmm. And but you know, they they look at mm -hmm. them as gods. We know them for who they really are, and we won't take that over here. We we will not take that because of who we are. I make there's a lot of warriors that were taken over here, a lot of warrior spirits that are within us. And if all of us go back home, they trying to stop all of that. It's over for them, it's over for all of them, and they are afraid of that. Not only that, when we leave America, because of the power that we have, the frequency that, especially that we're starting to operate on, even though we didn't know about it, it was there within us. And they were harnessing this for their, uh, for their glory, for their fame. Uh, like my zombie said, that's why they called America the superpower, because they knew who they had brought over here. In Babylon, when you look in scripture, who did they, they take in Babylon? They took the choices, they said, from our people, right? Well, they did the same thing when they, they took them and, and, and brought our ancestors over to America, over into Brazil and these different places. They took the best of the best to help build up their land. So everything belongs to us. The Bible says that the earth is ours anyway, and the forest, you know, it belongs to us. He told us to have yeah. dominion. Dominion means to rule. And to, to rule me, see, you, you have people out there that look like us. They're so ignorant. They think that they know the truth. They think that they know scripture and they don't even understand. To have dominion, dominion is a kingly term. Dominion means to rule authority. So 
if you have dominion, that means that you are a king, you're ruler. And he gave it to Muntu to us. So that makes us kings and queens. So there you have it to the people that are saying we're not kings and queens. Oh, yes, because he told us to have dominion because the whole universe is his. And when you understand about kingdoms, when a king goes out and get territory, it belongs to him and he has his son to rule. He becomes a king over that area now. It's like a vassal state. So the earth he gave to us. So this is his vassal state. That is why he, he, it says, thine will be done on earth as it is in heaven because his rules are established in that new kingdom. It's an extension of his kingdom. So the earth is an extension of heaven. We're supposed to exemplify. That's why he said we are the salt of the earth. When you understand what salt does. The light of the world. We are to bring the principles and the, 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 the uh, commands and the way of living from heaven down here on earth. We are the embassy, the ambassadors of the most high. And we are to rule. The Bible says that the earth is moaning and groaning. Creation is moaning and groaning. It's out of order. It's chaos in the world because the head is not in place. There is disorder because the people that are supposed to be ruling are not ruling. Those that are ruling now are nothing but chaotic people. They bring, they have a chaotic frequency. Everything that they do, it brings about destruction on the creation of Tatanzan. So we know it was not given to them because they destroy everything. Queen Royal Daughter. Yeah, real quick, I just wanted to say the reason why we're seeing they're making all these discoveries of uh, mountains of gold and diamond and silver. This is like the third time it has happened within like two years. It's because our people are going back home. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I was going to say it's preparation. It's preparation. The land is preparing for our return. return. Yes. People I, go back. So many people have gone back. The land is start going to start spitting it out. Yes. Wow. Right. And what, what does scripture say? Eyes have not seen. Ears have, uh -huh. have not heard what I have prepared. In store. Yes. Wow. You all, the things I'm telling you now, I'm going to tell you this to encourage you all. <laughs> Don't be discouraged because they coming in and taking the gold. Those puppet leaders in place, they were placed there by the colonial powers for the very reason of what they're doing. But their time is coming short and they're going to receive the same fate as the people that put them in power. And that which they are stealing from us, that's nothing what he has in store for us. The things that he has for us, they have never laid eyes on. Land they have never been on. Trust and believe. They have never seen the colonial powers, the things that are stored for us. Trust and believe and know that. Hallelujah. Wow. Uh, and Mama Brenda, but based on what you just said, I remember uh, Brother Anabi Yanata said that they, there are elements and stones and minerals in the ground on the land that haven't even been discovered yet. Oh, that we don't see them. Even animals that they, they're still trying to discover, they, they, they say yes. that it's land that they haven't even tread upon. Hallelujah. And all this is ours. Hallelujah. It's all ours. So, wow. Ben and Zombie, all praises to the most high Tata and Zombie and Bodhi to Lendo Alcongo. Prepare yourselves. Prepare yourselves to go home. We are returning to the land that Tata Zambi has given us, the land that he chose for us, the land where the kingdom will be established forever, and he will be our king. Hallelujah. Amen. So be encouraged. The land is preparing itself for the return of Benan Zambis. Hallelujah. Yes. And when that day comes, it will be a day of rejoice. 
Hallelujah. And there's nothing, nothing that the enemy can do to stop it. Not a thing. They cannot even slow it down because the time has been appointed. So it shall and will take place. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All Hallelujah. Know who you are, my people. Know who you are and walk in it. Speak. Yes. Speak because you're created after the image and likeness of Tata and Zambi. Yes. The power yes. is in your hands. You do have the power. Use what Tata and Zambi has given you and use it for good, use it for strength. Not evil. Not evil, yeah. but for good and use it purposely. Not careless. Yes. Hallelujah. I so, received it. I'm going to go ahead. And thank his thoughts. I'm sorry. Say that again, I Queen Brenda. We, 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 we must think his thoughts, not ours, not those that are bombarding us, but we have to replace those thoughts with his thoughts. Yes. Tata's thoughts. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Ungumban. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And guess what? We know his thoughts. Yes. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. I'm going to end the, the uh, recording. And um, y'all know how we do. So I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> All praise, oh, praise to the most high. Yeah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. yeah.